What's up ghosts, Jake here. I'm making this video because someone commented on my last video claiming that I didn't do my due diligence in researching those Navy UFOs. You'll remember that I cited Mick West often, and I talked about his attempt to debunk FLIR 1, Gimbal, and Go Fast. In short, this person called Mick West untrustworthy and doubted my credibility for seemingly taking his word for it. I did try to present both sides of the argument, but maybe... I didn't do it justice, so he proposed that I do my own debunk of Mr. West. I didn't do that exactly, but I did do a deep dive on specifically the Go Fast UFO video, and then I compared my results with West's findings. And I found some interesting things that I'd like to share with you. Keep in mind that this isn't part three, it's more like part 2.0. Five. Stay tuned for the breakdown and make sure you watch all the way to the end. Believe it or not, that helps me out a lot. But first, shout out Sir Halo 2, Mark McWayne, Alley Cat, Delia Darling, Gary Baba Booey, and <laughs> Michael Thompson. To the Stars Academy of Arts and Science and the History Channel's Unidentified provide information about the Go Fast UFO video. Check out my last video, part two of my UFO series, for more info on those videos. For the Go Fast video, they claim this UFO is low and fast, specifically claiming that it is going two thirds the speed of sound and that thing is hauling. That's ass. exactly my point. It's a little less than two thirds the speed of sound. But how do we know that? The following is a step by step video of exactly what I did to determine how high and how fast the object in question really is. I apologize if I go a little fast, but to be sure, all of my steps are shown on screen, so feel free to pause the video at any time and make sure you are following along. But first, I wanna make one thing clear. My goal is to be as factually accurate as possible, but I understand that as a human, I am prone to bias and am very fallible. Many people have had to correct me on my line of thinking, but you know what, it's all right. In fact, it is a good thing to accept correct when you are actually wrong. What you're about to see is my attempt to show that to the stars and unidentified are wrong in their analysis. But ultimately, I recognize that I could be wrong. It's just, I'm working with the information that's available to me and doing my best to piece it together in the way that makes sense. So please, if I get something wrong, let me know so I can correct the mistake. The ultimate goal of this channel isn't to prove aliens or Bigfoot or disprove aliens or Bigfoot. It's to find the truth. Let's break this down one step at a time. The video in question titled Go Fast is from To The Stars Academy of Arts and Science. The video is two minutes and four seconds long, but the UFO is only visible for about 22 seconds. One thing I'm sure you'll notice is that there is a lot of information in the heads up display on the screen. That information is very useful and when pieced together in the correct way, it provides great insights into what we are actually looking at. This number right here at the beginning of the video indicates the jet's altitude in feet. And over the course of the video, it remains pretty constant at around 25,000 feet. This is represented here, one block being 2,000 feet. Now let's add the downward camera angle to the diagram. At the point the jet locks onto the object, the camera is tilted 26 degrees below the jet. This is great because believe it or not, this gives us all the information we need to create a beautiful triangle. And triangles can provide a lot of information. We have a straight line of 25,000 feet from the jet to the ocean surface, and that creates a 90 degree angle here. And we know that 90 minus 26 degrees, the angle the camera is pointed downward gives us 64 degrees. With these three pieces of information, we can know the side lengths of both the adjacent side, the hypotenuse, and the opposing third angle. So the other angle is 26 degrees, the adjacent side length is 51,257 feet, and the hypotenuse, the longest line, is 57,029 feet. So at the beginning of the video, when the camera locks onto the object, we know that the UFO is somewhere in this line. But how do we go about determining where exactly it is in that line? Well, it's actually pretty simple. This number is the range. It indicates how far along the slant the object is. That would be 4.4 nautical miles. 4.4 nautical miles equals 26,735 feet. So all we need to do is measure down the hypotenuse 26,735 feet, and we have all of the information we need for a new exciting triangle. And once we figure out the dimensions of our new triangle, like we did before, we can see that the UFO is 11,720 feet below the jet. And 25,000 minus 11,720 feet gives us 13,280 feet above the ocean. 
Does that sound very low over the water to you? It's lower than the jet, but it's actually closer to the height of the jet than it is to the water. Unidentified and to the stars, what say ye? Okay, but what about how fast the object is going? It's a little bit more complicated, but not much. Really all we need to do is the same thing we did for its start position for its end position, and then measure the distance traveled. And since it's fairly clear that the object's altitude doesn't change over the course of 22 seconds, we can switch to an overhead view for the next part. This will help us visualize the actual distance traveled. To do this, we need to factor in the degree in which the camera is turned from the horizontal axis of the plane. This number indicates that the camera is at a 43 degree angle to the left of the jet when it first locks onto the object. Now keep in mind that this doesn't change our side view perspective at all. It's just that from our side view, you can imagine that you're looking at the triangle able to see its entire breadth while the jet is pointed 43 degrees away from our point of view. That makes it jive with reality and everything. We know that this distance is 24,029 feet. So from our top view, all we need to do is measure that distance and there the UFO is at 43 degrees left of the jet. Now let's figure out where the jet and UFO are in relation to each other at the end of the video. In order to do that, we need to know how fast the jet was traveling. This number here is a calibrated airspeed in knots, which is nearly constant throughout the video. But just to be overly clear here, at the point the camera locks onto the object, the jet is traveling at 253 knots calibrated speed. And at the end of the video, it is traveling at 258 knots calibrated speed. To give you some context, this is a difference of less than six miles per hour. And six miles per hour over the course of 22 seconds, the length of time from when the camera locks onto the object to the end of the video is negligible. So for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to split the difference and assume it, it is traveling at a constant speed of about 256 knots calibrated airspeed. However, the calibrated airspeed isn't its true airspeed. Using an aviation calculator online, we can get a good idea of its true airspeed. At 25,000 feet and a calibrated airspeed of 256 knots, this gives us a true airspeed of about 372 knots. From the time the camera locks onto the object till the end of the video, there is a span of 22 seconds. We want to convert 372 to knots, the speed of the jet, into feet per second. This will allow us to determine how far the jet traveled in feet over the course of 22 seconds. Uh, 372 knots converted into feet per second gives us about 628 feet per second. So 628 feet times 22 seconds gives us 13,816 feet per 22 seconds. So this is how far the jet traveled if it went in a straight line. You might have noticed that the jet banks about 15 degrees left. It's indicated here. Factoring this in, this is about what we get. And this is significant if we are to get a good idea where the UFO is at the end of the video. So now let's add the camera angle at the end of the video. It's at 58 degrees left of the jet, and that looks like this. Even without measuring, notice how the angle crosses exactly over where the UFO was at the start position. Not looking good for unidentified and to the stars at the moment. Now we just need to measure down the camera angle and find out where our UFO is. Let's draw our final triangle from our side view to get the distance. We see right here at the end of the video the camera is 35 degrees below the jet which gives us an angle of 55 degrees and because we have a 90 degree angle here that gives us a 35 degree angle here and because 3.4 nautical miles the distance to the object at the end of the video because that is 20,659 feet this is what our triangle looks like at the end of the video and this triangle gives us a distance of 16,900 123 feet. So right now all we need to do is measure 16,923 feet along our top view final camera angle line and boom there is a UFO start position and after 22 seconds there is the end position of the UFO and this is what it looks like all put together. Now let's measure the distance traveled of the UFO itself. It's a little less than one of those 2,000 feet blocks. It's about 1,750 feet and that might sound like a lot. It must have been Hauling. That's yeah. exactly my point. But if we divide that into 22 seconds, that gives us about, we'll say, 80 feet per second. And that also sounds like pretty fast, right? But that is about 47 knots, which to give you some perspective, that's 54 miles per hour, not two thirds the speed of sound. And I just want to emphasize that I did this calculation independent of Mick West's calculation. And if you remember from his analysis of the Go Fast video, he got that the object was traveling anywhere from 20 to 40 knots. So mine is a little higher than his high estimate, but not by much. 
and by no means is this thing going two-thirds the speed of sound. Not even close. It should be noted that by far the most difficult thing to account for in this video is the jet banking to the left. It's hard to know for certain the exact amount it banks and to factor it in exactly. That's why in West's video he gave a range estimate from 20 to 40 knots. The speed of the object would change a little bit depending on how fast the jet was banking. That said, I'm going to take one step further here and try and get a closer estimate and factor out the banking altogether. I feel like I can do this because there are about 5 seconds of those 22 seconds where the jet is moving more or less level. From about 1 minute and 34 seconds to 1 minute and 39 seconds, the jet appears to be level. And going through all the same steps I did before in drawing our triangles but factoring out the banking by isolating my calculations to the first 5 seconds, I got 32 knots falling right in the middle of West's estimate. But wait, why does it look like it's moving so fast? Well, this is called the parallax effect and it's relatively easy to reproduce. So as you can see, I was just skating along this bike path and I had this little yellow toy that I hung from a tree. And uh, you can see, obviously see that it's stationary and but because of my motion past it and because I'm zoomed in on it, the background is zooming by giving an illusion that it's moving. And if you didn't see the tree that it was hanging from, you might actually think that it was moving. That is the parallax effect. And this is exactly the same thing that is happening with this go fast UFO. And something I like to point out that becomes obvious when it is brought to your attention it is this, and it makes it a lot more clear why this parallax effect happens. At the start of the video, our line of sight through the camera is pointed right here at the ocean's surface. And this is our line of sight at the end of 22 seconds. And this distance is about 14,000 feet. And we know that our line of sight is traveling from point A to point B with the UFO locked in the center of our field of view. And I put together this representation of what that would look like. This is more or less what we see on the screen. You see the ocean surface moving by with the object locked in the center. So that's kind of that. But wait, again! How can something be traveling so slowly if it really is traveling slowly in the air? Because there is no known aircraft that can stay aloft for long without a source of lift and propulsion. Well, it's because it's most likely a weather balloon that can stay aloft for long periods of time. All of its characteristics suggest that is what it is, and Luis Elizondo himself said that's what it was in an official government document. This is an independent confirmation of Mick West's evaluation on the Go Fast UFO video. Keep in mind that I am not speaking to the FLIR 1 video or the Gimbal video at this time. I actually believe that something strange was going on with FLIR 1, and I'm on the fence about Gimbal, but as for Go Fast, this is not what the people from To The Stars and Unidentified say it is. Luis Elizondo, former head of the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program and current Director of Government Programs and Services at Tom DeLonge's To The Stars Academy of Arts and Science, barring my own and Mick West's analysis being faulty, you are either ignorant of the reality of your own video or you are purposely attempting to mislead the public. And considering that you yourself wrote below balloon in an official document describing this thing, I think you know it's a balloon. But maybe Mr. DeLong doesn't. So Tom, I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt here, but I implore you to take a serious look at the Go Fast video and reevaluate your thoughts on it. Thank you everybody, please like and subscribe, help me out on Patreon so I can make these videos more often, and make sure to share this video to get the word out. My goal still is to have a thousand subscribers by the end of the year, and you guys are already amazing and helping me do that. I appreciate it a lot. Lastly, make sure to let your voice be heard and vote right here on what we should investigate next. I've gotten a lot of good suggestions and here is your chance to help direct this channel. Should we deep dive into Maddie Ann and her paranormal stalker, Sean McNamara and his mind possible telekinetic powers, or Noah the time traveler from the year 2030? Wait, wait, wh what about part three of our UFO series? Like you said we were gonna do three parts. We've only done two, like two and a half. Yeah, but I'm, I'm kind of getting tired of, of UFOs. I mean, it's already March and we've only talked about UFOs, right? And to be honest, I think they're getting tired of UFOs as well. <sighs> you just you just don't want to address the full-bodied alien greys inside the cockpit over the UFO over Turkey. No, I assure you that is not the reason because there are no grey aliens inside the cockpit. Whatever, why don't we let them have a choice? 
How about option four, the UFO turkey incident? Well, okay, what's it gonna be? Vote now and let us know. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Looking forward to you guys voting. Stay tuned for our next video. I'm looking forward to it and I know he is too. Let's do this. Yeah, turkey UFO, turkey UFO, turkey UFO, turkey UFO, turkey UFO. Turkey UFO.